have an opportunity uh, uh, here in the Mission Control Center to be uh, joined by uh, the uh, Commercial Crew Program Manager, Ed Mango. Ed, we really appreciate you stopping by. I know you, you flew into Houston, I guess, yesterday, and, uh, and so we grabbed you for a few minutes to come by. And uh, I know Mission Control's uh, not unfamiliar to you in your, in your past life uh, uh, supporting uh, space shuttle program here. Uh, so welcome. Thanks for stopping by for a few minutes. It's uh, very good to be here. Well, you know, I usually, when I talk to folks, I usually start out to let the audience know uh, a little bit about them, your whole history about uh, getting to NASA. Give us a little bit of biographical uh, info on how you ended up in the space business, uh, where you went to school, those types of things. Well, see, I grew up in South Florida, and uh, I got to see... Uh, uh, Apollo 17 launch uh, from my backyard um, down in South Florida because it was a night launch and that turned me on to this space stuff is pretty cool. Uh, I ended up going to uh, school up in St. Louis, St. Louis University uh, Parks College and um, and then I spent a couple years in the Air Force, about five years in the Air Force working the shuttle at Vandenberg when we were going to do a Vandenberg program. Uh, once that was decided not to go there, um, some NASA folks at Kennedy asked me to come work at Kennedy, so I jumped on that in a heartbeat, and uh, I've been at Kennedy for most of my career since then, except during uh, return to flight uh, for uh, uh, post-Columbia, I came over here to JSC, great place to work, and was deputy of the um, orbiter project office during return to flight phase. I've uh, since been back at Kennedy, and, um, and about a couple years ago, I was asked to lead the commercial crew program, and at that point, it was a planning office trying to figure out if we can go do a commercial right. crew endeavor, and uh, now it's a full-up program, and we're trying to execute. Well, here we go. Um, you know, you, you kind of talked about how you segue into that role, but, uh, you know, the government, the way we've done business in the past, it's a little bit different with, with your program moving into a commercial crew endeavor. Um, but uh, give us kind of a flavor for how your organization is uh, set up and, you know, because you've got folks working with the program office in Florida, the deputy program obviously based here, so it, it, there's a lot of uh, interaction between your team, but how, how did you organize all that? And see, uh, when we started the program, or the planning office for the program, um, Brett Jett, who's my deputy here in Houston, uh, got together, him and I got together and said, how do we want to organize? And uh, unlike the shuttle program that had different projects at different centers, we wanted to uh, be as center less as possible and get the right talent in the program. So we created um, organizations within the program that are have people here in Johnson as well as people at Kennedy as well as people at Marshall and they all work in the same uh, specific areas like launch vehicle, uh, like in our uh, uh, partner integration teams and that kind of thing. And we look for the best people to go do those. It didn't matter what zip code they lived in to create the program office. So it's a little different than what uh, the shuttle program did. At the same point, you know, in our, in 2012, um, I think the borders of zip codes and things are much easier to get around because of all the media uh, ability to communicate back and forth. Right, right. Um, the other aspect of commercial crew is uh, you're operating under Space Act agreements, which we're all familiar with that, obviously, in business, but it's not a true contract-type scenario. And uh, try and lay out for us the, the Space Act agreement uh, part of the program, how that works, and, and uh, what your, some of your milestones have been and, and are, are coming up. Yeah, Space Act agreements are uh, was a different set of words when I first started. Um, I'm, again, I was used to contract mechanisms, and, and uh, in general terms, a contract is, is there's, a, there's a customer um, and, uh, and a client, and then there's someone who's producing the activity, and that's a standard contract approach. And in SAA, the biggest difference is it's a partnership, and we both are bringing uh, capability to the partnership. Um, in this case, uh, for commercial crew, we are bringing funding a pretty big part of funding, and but we're also bringing our 50 years of experience, our engineers, our safety professionals, our program management folks uh, to go help the individual partners move forward, and our partners are our companies. So we don't call them contractors, we call them partners. Um, the big thing, big difference is, is in a contract you can direct the, uh, the contractor to do work. Sometimes it comes at a cost. Uh, in a partnership, um, it's really a, um, it's a, 
a discussion between the two partners of what is the right thing to go do. And so the government can't force a partner to go do A, B, or C, but it's uh, through our influence and through our experience that we can help the partners move forward with their designs. All right, that's that's really it's an interesting it's an interesting approach and um, you, I think you I don't know if this is the right time for you but you had a short video that you asked us to prepare for you is, is this a good time for that yeah I think it's a, a real good time because it's going to explain briefly how what we're trying to get done um, in a uh, in a very positive sense okay well, let's run that. Well, that's uh, pretty fast-paced and probably representative of the, the commercial crew program right now is being pretty fast-paced. Um, <laughs> you've uh, obviously, you know, we, we just got the, uh, well, we're operating under the fiscal 12 budget right now, and you, you, you've got a, probably about half of what the original request was, and that, that you, you had to do a little bit of uh, restructuring and how you, uh, your philosophy on going forward. and. Um, can you talk a little bit about that and, and maybe about your 13 request that obviously is just getting started for the program? Sure. Um, you know, we uh, the president asked for uh, 850 last year, and in the end, through all the negotiating, we end up getting 406. So it's a lot less than we had anticipated. Um, and so one of the first things we did is uh, we saw that there's uh, – some uncertainty in the budget numbers we're going to have not only for this year at 406, but also for the next couple of years. So we decided to back off from a, uh, a fixed price contract uh, and uh, move into a uh, back into an SAA. And I talked earlier about what SAAs right. were with partners. And uh, on our contract, we can drive them. The, the, dish, the issue was on a fixed price, the government now is on that fixed price is guaranteed to have to pay so much uh, for so much effort. And uh, if we didn't have that kind of money, then, then the government side of that contract would, would be in trouble. So that we, for flexibility, we went back to NSA. Um, this year, we're, uh, you know, the president's budget asked for 830. Uh, and the reason for that is, is uh, you know, the, the, we need enough money to get into um, serious design work, serious development work, and then into certification. So for 830 per year for the next uh, four or five years, that's how much money we think we need in order to get uh, at least two multiple systems uh, through um, certification, basically. Uh, the reason, you know, a lot of talk about competition, and uh, I, just, I would say that, um, you know, for all of us, uh, the competition is, uh, is key to how we do our whole acquisition approach. Because as you have competition, then individual companies are going to see that they have a competitor on their side, and therefore they have to uh, do things in order to make their system better, in order to make their system either more cost effective or have more performance. Right, right. Well, you know, part of that is, um, you know, what you're talking about narrowing it down to a couple of uh, companies. Obviously, um, I believe you've got seven now that are uh, that are operating under funded and unfunded Space Act agreements. And uh, um, lay out how that uh, how that is all structured right now, and and what some milestones are leading up to selecting the finalists, if you will. Okay. Um, I think we even have a, a chart that kind of highlights all seven uh, of our current partners, of which um, if we can show that, that would be good. 
Um, let's see, we have four partners that are funded um, and three that are unfunded. And uh, we did that as we entered in the CCDEV2. The uh, agency and, uh, and the organization, the program, looked uh, at the entrance of CCDEV2 and said, our biggest technology risks or our biggest risk towards development are really in spacecraft. Uh, at this particular point. And so we really wanted to fund those spacecraft uh, entities, and that's what we did for CCDF2, and that's why those are funded ones. Uh, alongside of that, there are some unfunded ones uh, that wanted to have us continue to work with them on their launch vehicles and how they might design their launch vehicles and or certify the launch vehicles. And so we entered into a couple more unfunded with uh, some launch vehicle folks. And there is another spacecraft that wanted also to have it unfunded. So we, we worked with all seven of those. The unfunded ones don't cost uh, the taxpayer any dollars except in uh, really in NASA support to go support those particular entities, but there's no funding exchange going on between us and the partner. The funded ones are, are really the ones that uh, are trying to move us forward on overall development. And uh, there are four of those. Uh, the first is uh, um, really Blue Origin. Blue Origin is out of Seattle, and they are working towards uh, uh, some very good efforts on um, their abort system as well as a uh, potential launch system for their uh, for their design. Uh, Boeing is the next one, and Boeing is really working hard, a um, little more traditional in how they do business. Um, and they're working towards a uh, preliminary design review of which we just finished their hardware one um, a couple weeks ago. And in fact, that's why I'm in Houston, is to close out their uh, PDR. Uh, we call preliminary design review, and uh, and that was really a joint partnership between uh, us and that, and and Boeing, to where uh, a lot of the findings and a lot of the issues that came out of that PDR were found through a joint team between us and Boeing. Very very good effort. Um, let's see, uh, Sierra Nevada is uh, uh, a next or another company. They're out of Colorado. They have a wing vehicle that they are developing, and uh, the biggest part about a wing vehicle is how. How are you going to integrate uh, the GNC or the guidance and control systems of a wing vehicle? So they're really focused on that, and plus also working towards a PDR kind of effort that they'll do later here this spring. And the last is uh, SpaceX, and uh, SpaceX is really taking their cargo system and trying to convert it to a, a human-capable system to carry crew, and their biggest effort during CCDF2 is really about uh, aborts and their abort motors and abort system. Right. Well, it's a it's a it's a great opportunity, obviously, for all of these companies to to get involved. A, a perfect opportunity to for you to be here because uh, obviously the one of the goals is to transport crew back and forth to the space station, and of course this is the station flight control room. In fact, just a a little while ago, uh, uh, Dan Burbank uh, had an opportunity to do a an interview, and he was asked about that, and he he mentioned that the time is right, and and uh, you know that uh, uh, some of the systems are well enough understood to to get to that point where we can actually uh, have a U.S. Uh, spacecraft. I, um, one of the last questions I wanted to ask you while you had time was, uh, you know, I I kind of sense it working uh, supporting the commercial crew a little bit, but um, uh, it seems to me there's a lot of excitement, not only on on the NASA side, but on with all of these companies um, as they, you know. It's kind of an integrated approach, and you've got folks that are supporting each one of those. But I mean, do you do you sense that when you, you travel a lot and talk to these people? Yeah. Let's see. Our, our uh, what we call them pit teams, our partner integration teams, and I call them pit crews for short. And I think you'll be talking to some of them <laughs> over the next week or so. Uh, our pit crews are extremely uh, excited about what's going on. Uh, with each of their partners and and um, in the program we're really excited about how we are developing the system very non-traditional overall it's a non-traditional approach uh, but we are we have the confidence that says that we are going to get there and uh, given enough funding we can get there by the middle of the decade uh, and I think Dan and, and the crew on station would like us very much to have a capability that uh, has a US flag flying on it in order to get not just our crew but a crew from across the planet to the ISS and to that great laboratory that we have on, in space. And so the timing is right. Uh, shuttle was a fantastic capability. Um, it, it ended last year, and now it's time to move forward with the next capability to get to low Earth orbit. And uh, that's what we're that's what we're all doing. The companies um, are really over the top on on excited. You know, they and because of the competition, uh, you can see it's like uh, it's like different teams trying right. to compete. 
against each other and really against themselves to perform so so well and get designs that can work. Yeah. Well, uh, look, uh, we really appreciate you taking time out. I know you're busy and uh, with all the work that you came to Houston for, but uh, it's really great for you to come by here and visit Mission Control and, and uh, kind of update us on everything that's going on with Commercial Crew. So we appreciate it. Ed Mango, the uh, manager of the Commercial Crew Program, stopping by here in Mission Control for a, uh, a talk about his program and uh, what's been going on there. Thanks, Ed. Thank you. Thank you very much.